Good morning to all of you. This past Friday, we celebrated Veterans Day. It is a national holiday. And usually on Veterans Day, as well as Memorial Day and Fourth of July, we kind of change the song sheets around. And so today, we will begin our service by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and then singing our national anthem. So I ask that you please join with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite with me the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints in you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault. And you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. And may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, and absolution and a remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, your days are without end, and your mercies cannot be numbered. Make us mindful of the end of all things, and the day of your just judgment. So inspire us to holiness of life here, that we may dwell with you in eternity. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving Father, bless those who have served and those who are serving in the armed forces of our nation. Receive the souls of those men and women who gave their lives in the service of freedom as they gave themselves to advance the ideals of peace and justice. May they inspire our continued effort toward the same end. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl? Could you pro proclaim the word today? Please be seated. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven when all the proud and all the evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, they will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because of mercy of our God, by which the daybreak from on high will visit us. To shine on those who sit in darkness and death's shadow, to guide our feet into the path of peace. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thelosian. Brothers and sisters, 
you know how one must imitate us. For we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right, rather we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might in imitate us. In fact, when we were you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Cheryl. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion endures through all generations. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While some were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues, from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to you giving testimony Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to re resist or refute. You will be hand even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Today, instead of my offering up of a sermon and reflections on today's gospel, my sermon is contained in the bulletin, but I'm going to ask our synodal delegate, Dr. Shirley Melitsky Floyd, who will offer for a few moments a recap of what took place at the 26th General Synod of the Polish National Catholic Church held in Scranton, Pennsylvania, October 19th through the 21st. Dr. Shirley. specifics like you received as part of the bulletin. I just want to give you some of my impressions. Uh, I've been going to the synods for many years, and um, this one in particular, I was really impressed because of the diversity of the delegates. We have uh, two churches that have started out in the western part of our United States, in Denver and in Las Vegas. And with them came a large population of Latino um, men and women and young people. And it was just great to see their diversity, their enthusiasm for our church, um, their requests. They were very articulate in terms of wanting a lot of our materials in Spanish. Um, they already celebrate um, their mass in Spanish. Um, and the parish in particular in Las Vegas, the priest there uh, who came from the Roman Catholic Church, a very young man, enthusiastic priest, uh, has five masses um, in that church. And I believe our bishop from that diocese will be going out to confirm 50 to 60 children. So it was just quite impressive. And um, that, that felt just like really good. Um, and then along with that, there was a young man, and he is the chair of our National Youth Association. His name is Jorge Hernandez, also from one of those parishes. I think it was Denver, right? Yes. Denver. Very articulate, very enthusiastic. Uh, he spoke to the Synod, and he has specific goals um, for our church related to young people. And the first thing is that, uh, for those of you who have gone to youth convocations in the past, um, the convocations were available for young people from the ages of 12 to 18. And he's really encouraging our church to look at 12 to 27, 28 year, year olds to try to attract a lot of those young adults to um, maybe be interested and come back to our church again. So that's his goal for our next youth convocation, um, to increase it to 625 people to come to that youth convocation. So it's quite an impressive goal. We'll see what happens. One other thing he requested also um, is that, uh, that they form a National Youth Commission. And I'm pleased to say that that commission has already met by Zoom. And um, they, I, I'll have this at the back of the church um, when you leave. The first thing they're going to do as a youth commission, they're going to do an Advent reflection for youth. And again, that youth is anywhere from 12 to 27 years old. And that's going to be on Friday, December 2nd at 7.30, and it will be Zoom. And there's information, uh, and I'll ask Father in the future to you know, include this in, in the bulletin as well as to our email list. And so, again, it's a way of reaching young people. We know the best way to reach young people is through the social media. So if you have children, if you have grandchildren, nieces and nephews, you know, give it a shot. You know, maybe they would be interested in um, enjoying it. I think we all know we have lost uh, a whole generation of young, of young people to church. Not just our church, but, you know, many of the organized churches. The other thing were the two masses that we had. And the opening mass uh, was very impressive. We had six bishops from our own church, and then we had six other bishops, and they recommended, uh, recommend, uh, they were from the Nordic Catholic Church in Norway. We had the uh, bishop from the Roman Catholic Church. We had the bishops from the Anglican churches, um, and that was very impressive. And the other part that was impressive 
was that the readings were done in four languages, English, Polish, Norwegian, and Spanish. So that too was really, to me, very encouraging and very exciting. Um, and the same thing happened for the 125th um, mass that we had, along with, with, with the music, which was um, absolutely beautiful. Um, as you can see in the bulletin again, are the, these were just specifically some of the major decisions that were made at the Synod. Um, the discouraging news, of course, was that um, several men were nominated from the floor to come forward to become bishops, to be candidates for bishop. Um, unfortunately, except for one, uh, they are refused. That was discouraging. So the one priest who did come, come forward, the, um, um, the commission met with them the, the night before, but by the next morning he decided that maybe it just was not his time. So now our church, and this is our, our prime bishop and our bishops, need to work with the Supreme Council to restructure our diocese. Because the other sad part of all of this is the decreasing membership that we have found across all of our dioceses, and especially here in the East. Um, as I said before, we had probably about 154 delegates and clergy who came to the Synod. That's half probably what we had in the past. So some restructuring has to be done. We're not sure what that looks like. Um, the council and the bishops have two years in order to come up with a plan that will be presented to our diocesan synods that we'll be holding two years from now. I already spoke about the National Youth Commission, and um, one thing what they're finding is that a lot of the young people want to participate in these youth convocations, but they don't have the funding. So I, I was pleased to see that our fraternal organization, the Polish National U Union, will be offering scholarships for young people. So that's also like another avenue to help these young people to go to these convocations. There will also be some money available for students that are studying uh, in the healthcare field, and more in information on both of those things will come out in January. And um, a former attorney to our church uh, from the Scranton Parish, uh, Ernest Goss, who passed away, and he, in his estate of 55, part of his estate of $55,000 will be um, donated to the, to the church through the Polish National Union. Again, hopefully um, scholarships for students. Uh, I don't know about any of you here. Um, I think most of you know I grew up in Scranton Parish. And when I was going to college, I did apply for funding um, to help me with, with college, and especially for buying books and things like that. Today, I'm not sure if too many students use books, because I think so. books are kind of passe, but the money is there for you, like computers or programs that you need, or whatever the case may be. And a constitutional change, um, you know, we have a, a deacon um, from the Connecticut parish we have seen around, some deacon Justin, um, and the other parishes also have some deacons. In the past, these deacons and these reserve priests, and I, I think for quite a while, Father Robert was a reserve priest, they did not have a representation at the synods. So this is a constitutional change that now in the future, they will have representation, which means they can select a de delegate from among their deacons and the reserve priests to, to also have a say at the synods. Um, specifically related to, to our parish, you can see the change there regarding finances. Uh, in the past, if the parish was going to spend more than $10,000, you would have to have a special parish meeting. Now that amount has been increased to $20,000. So the parish committee can make those decisions um, without having a special parish meeting. And the whole reason for that is just, just the cost of things, a lot different than what it was before. In terms of finances, um, again, there was a parishioner in our DuPont, Pennsylvania parish, not far from Scranton, who left a lot of land to the church. And it just so happens that there's natural gas on that land. And so that's what this last thing is about, um, that they have been mining and crack cracking, as you probably have heard of, and the profits of that is going, some of it is going to the local parish of DuPont and also to the National Church. And at the Senate, there was a motion made that over the next four years, 25% of those profits will go towards the clergy pension fund 
which again will be helpful to our priests here and our priests, you know, throughout the church. And uh, finally, as I mentioned before, you know, we have we had several bishops from some several churches, um, from the Anglican Church, the Nordic Catholic Church, and the Roman Catholic Church, and those dialogues continue. So that was some um, that that's really great to see. Um, and finally, I guess a couple things that stood out for me, and there were a lot of discussions. We had long days, eight o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night. Um, one person got up and, and said something that we probably should look at in terms of each of us, each of our parishes. Are we more of an ethnic club, meaning that people know us for a pierogi and a monkey, which is great, and I, I'm pleased to hear that our food fest was so successful. But also, are we Eucharistic people? And that has been the theme for our church for this whole year, um, from the future directions, as well as through the Mission and Evangelism Committee, which Father is part of both in the diocese and nationally. So are we, you know, walking out these doors and we continue to be kind, um, considerate and helpful to people outside these doors, you know, beyond a Sunday? And that really stood out for me. And another man uh, stood up and talked about marketing. Now, obviously that, that was his job. And that has always been an issue within our church that we don't do enough marketing. And he in particular said, you know, companies, they talk about, well, what is your special sauce? And they're not talking about food. It's just that, what makes you so special and so unique from other parishes? And again, he was encouraging us to think about that and think about that in terms of how we can promote our church and make this church fuller than what it is right now. So um, those are my highlights. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, I'll save, uh, I'll share this financial report with Eric from our diocese. And uh, you can't see this, but I could pass it along, or I'll just put it, I'll put it on the way up. Um, it just shows our membership from the Eastern Diocese. And from a very high up here to a very low over here, in terms of um, the number of people that we have lost over the years. So those, those are my, my, uh, my report and my perspective. And I don't know if Father wants to add anything. Surely to take all the proceedings of our General Synod and to capsulize as you did. Um, the next time I feel like I want to take a break for offering a sermon, it will be <laughs> the first that I will get in contact with. Um, we'd like to continue with this, um, not necessarily today, but a lot of things took place at the Synod. And, and I truly feel and I think many of the members, the delegates, felt that the spirit was alive. And that um, I was very impressed also with the readings and the intentions that took place Polish, English, Norwegian, and Spanish. Now when we say national church, it, it is not just for the Polish. The ideals that uh, Bishop Hogarth started with uh, to have uh, freedom and tolerance and this is something that we see being carried over from generation to generation and now we have a door that is open what we call the union of Scranton of where we basically have brought as in, in the case the, um, the Nordic Catholic Church um, where the head of the Nordic Catholic Church actually signed as be a part of the Union of Scranton and it took place on the sacrificial altar in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, I would use a word or the term of being fired up with this National Youth Convention. One of the things that takes place at the Synod is that there are papers that are put out for people to sign up for the national commissions. Um, I am presently um, on the National Mission in Evangelism as well as the National School of Christian Living and the counterparts um, in our own diocese. But when 
Mr. Jorge Fernandez gave his presentation, there was an automatic standing ovation. As, as Shirley stated, how articulate he was. And that when it came for people to sign up for the different commissions, I think they said something like four pages yes. <laughs> of people that wanted to serve. So the spirit was alive. You know, when we come together every four years for a general synod, I have also been to many synods in the past, but I have to say that I was very impressed with the synod that took place in Scranton, Pennsylvania, at St. Stanislaus, Bishop and Martyr, the first parish of which the late Prime Bishop Francis Holder was a pastor. So like I said, not to prolong, we would like to continue this. I knew that I was having difficulties in trying to share with some of the reports, but um, we will provide the information as much as we can. Uh, reports such as the Prime Bishop's report, our own diocesan uh, Bishop Paul Sobiehuski, his report, and also some of the other um, societies, such as the Ladies ANS, the YMS of R, the uh, United Choirs, and of course the youth. So I want to thank Shirley for giving a very concise and a wonderful presentation on some of the highlights to be able to again capsulize what took place from Wednesday until Friday and then on Saturday celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Polish National Catholic Church. It was very uh, impressive. And so again, Shirley, I want to thank you for your time, for your dedication, not only to our parish, but also to the strategic planning and the future direction. And we are looking at wanting to try to consolidate because of the new year of 2023 to come up with a theme and to actually have the information that would be siphoned down to some of the other uh, commissions, the National Mission in Evangelism, Strategic Planning, and in the future direction. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. If the world hates you, Realize that it hated me first.
receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they, whose memories we celebrate here on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ, our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, empower us who offer these gifts to bring your healing power and presence to a world sadly lacking in love, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, as we offer to you this sacrifice, may we dedicate ourselves to continue in the heritage that you have entrusted to us. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and then called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zion and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion and the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and those children especially suffering from the RSV. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. In our deepest prayers today, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces, and especially as we remember those who gave of themselves the veterans of our country. 
And may we also pray this day for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you this sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family our savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you god his almighty father and giving thanks to you he blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and especially our veterans who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, 
grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, meriting eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take Amen. away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us. Living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, 
those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the body and the blood of Christ.
be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, lift us beyond the narrow horizons of this world that we may see by your sight live by your law, and be saved by the grace of this Holy Communion. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we have received the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we draw unto himself those veterans who have honorably served in the cause of freedom and justice. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be accept acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness, but it did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. 
became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 